Hello and welcome to Introduction to Robotics using the LEGO Mindstorms robotic platform. My name is Brock Lemaires and I will be your instructor for this online short course on robotics. So the motivation for this course is to provide an introduction to robotics as a platform to teach science, technology, engineering, and math, also known as STEM. So the key to this is that this is an introductory level course. <clears throat> the intended audience of this are pre and in-service teachers and there is no experience necessary. So this, is, this course is designed for teachers that have never built or programmed a robot but wish to use the robotics platform in order to highlight some aspect of STEM and potentially participate in some robotic competitions that are available to students. So why robotics? Why is robotics such an ideal platform for teaching STEM? Well the first thing is that it's an interdisciplinary ap application that spans many curriculum areas. If you start with the E in STEM, which is engineering, <clears throat> uh, you have every aspect, almost every aspect of engineering in a robot. So you have the system design of interdisciplinary pieces coming together to accomplish a task, and these include the electrical systems of a robot, such as the motors and the energy, uh, the mechanical system, all of the moving piece parts, and the interaction between all of the different actuators and motors, and you have a significant computer programming uh, component to this too. So computer or robots are tend to be autonomous, meaning that they can perform tasks by themselves, and that's that's enabled by sophisticated programming programs that run on the computer system within the robotics. But you also have uh, other engineering disciplines that interact with robots, such as aerospace engineering. So robotics are used for uh, for interplanetary exploration. What we're looking at right now is the Mars Curiosity rover that's exploring the surface of Mars. And there's a lot of uh, aspects that need to be considered when you think about robotics in space. But you also have other things such as chemical and energy, so the batteries that that run the robots, and you have nuclear engineering. So engineering is really a, uh, a great great curriculum or a great discipline to uh, <clears throat> that that spans all aspects of robotics. So robotics are used are, are becoming one of the more popular platforms to teach robotics and all of the principles of engineering. You also have science. So how can robotics be used to teach science? So it's not necessarily the 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 actual design of the robot itself, but it's the use of robotics to explore and understand. So to go places that humans can't go right now, for example, the the surface of Mars or to the deepest parts of the ocean. So what, what, what can we use the robots to do? What can we use robotics to observe and how can robotics be used to explain what's going on? We also have math. <clears throat> math is obviously used in the design of robotics. Uh, math is used uh, uh, very widespread in engineering to perform the design and analysis of robotic systems. But robotics can also stress the importance of math when performing tasks. So simple operations such as how many times will the wheel spin in order to make the robot move forward 12 inches? Or how, ma how many degrees does it need to turn it with a particular radius to face north? So there's a lot of applications that robotics can be used to, uh, to stress math concepts that make it a little bit more funner or a little bit funner than actually just working math on, with pen and paper. And then finally you have technology. So the technology aspect is obvious when you construct a robot, but the technology is really, really immense in, in some of the modern robots, especially the robot we're looking at here, the Mars Curiosity rover. Because it's not just the technology of all the piece parts coming together and the motors and the, the fuel cells, but it's also the sensors. So the technology that is involved in some of these sensors, the laser sensors and some of the biological sensors that are used to collect information about the the environment that it's in are, are really some of the more sophisticated advances in technology that we've seen. So all of these areas come together and they allow robotics to teach all of this with one unified platform. And in addition, robotics can be a very exciting application. So some students get very excited about anything to do with robotics. What we're looking at here is, <clears throat> this is called Robonaut, and this is a uh, robot that's humanoid form that's been developed by NASA. And on the left, you see it attached to a uh, rover vehicle on the plan on planet Earth. And on the right, you actually see this uh, on the International Space Station. So Robonaut is currently on the International Space Station.
Station. It's shaking uh, the hands of uh, Dan Burbank, which is the International Space Station c commander, or was at the time. And so this can be awe-inspiring. So science fiction becomes reality when you think about some of the things that are happening with robotics. So... <clears throat> But it's even more than that. So for this, for people that aren't necessarily excited or students that aren't necessarily excited directly by robotics, it can also highlight how STEM benefits society. So you look at robotics being used in things such as uh, advanced healthcare, so robotic surgery, uh, robotic surgery, surgery, surgeon assistants. We also have uh, co-robots working alongside humans in manufacturing. We have public safety, so firefighting robots, but not putting humans in harm's way by exploiting uh, by exploiting robots. And then it's other advances such as advanced prosthetics, and the list goes on and on. But it's important to stress how STEM benefits society because this tends to attract a more diverse population into the workforce, and this becomes very important important when you look at creativity and maintaining a thriving STEM workforce. Okay, so that's why we're going to use robotics in this course. So let me give you a, a quick background on myself just so you know who the voice is behind all of these videos. Uh, I'm a professor at Montana State University in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department and I received my Bachelor of Science, Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering from MSU a, and I received my Master's and PhD from the University of Colorado. I worked for Hewlett Packard for eight years as a digital design engineer where I designed electronic test equipment so I was, uh, I was actually building hardware and doing low-level computer architecture. And then for the past 10 years, I've been working for Montana State in Bozeman, teaching and conducting research in the area of computer systems, robotics, and engineering education. So my background most relative relative to the uh, robotics front is I've been awarded a, a number of projects from NASA to use robotics to teach STEM and this I've, I also have received a number of projects to use to try to increase diversity in STEM and I've tried to apply that uh, these these techniques using robotics in order to get more underrepresented groups into into STEM such as uh, females predominantly and I've also been awarded some projects from uh, NASA to develop space tech, space computing technology. So all three of those NASA sponsored uh, areas of my research kind of all work together in in terms of what we do with robotics. So it's it's research on how to build better computers for for robotics themselves. But how do we use robotics to teach STEM? How do we stress the uh, public value of robotics in order to get different populations into the STEM workforce? And then finally, I've uh, received a, a a number of awards from the National Science Foundation to improve STEM education using e-learning environments. So really studying the the pedagogy of how engineering students learn and that of course is then tied back, in, tied back into using robotics. So at this point it's time to get started through the course. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn a little bit about the theory of robotics and the terms that are used in robotics. And this again is for <clears throat> for introductory uh, beginning teachers. Okay, so this you don't have to have any expertise in in STEM. Uh, this is for people who have never opened up a robotics kit, who have never built a robot, who have never programmed a computer. We're going to start at the very basic level. The robotics platform that we're going to use in this is the Lego Mindstorms kit, and this is a, a very popular educational platform. And they actually have two of them. You can see on the left you have the Lego Mindstorm NXT, which is an older version, and then on the right is the Mindstorm. EV3. So this course is going to use these two kits and there'll be kind of a parallel path once we break off and start looking at how to build particular robots and how to program the robots and so we'll have separate videos for for each of the different platforms but this is what we're going to use to kind of do the hands-on portion of this lab. So there'll be lecture, there'll be videos that talk about kind of what are the principles of robotics, what are the main components, how to get familiar with programming, and then we'll get into opening the box, how to how to install software, how to actually program it, and then we'll go through some basic tasks and we'll kind of build up our competency in terms of programming a robot. And at the end, we'll culminate with kind of a final autonomous robotic task where you'll actually build where you build and program a robot to do something. Uh, hands off. So uh, I look forward to working with you in this course and let's go.